G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear. You'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes. You'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture. You'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyze historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you, and you might want to consider subscribing. In this video, we're going to make a leather belt for historical medieval reenactment. About a year ago, I made a video on the medieval ring belts you often see in reenactment, SCA, LARPing, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I got some very interesting feedbacks, lots of very creative feedback, but also got some some negative feedback from people suggesting it wasn't as historically accurate as I had uh, perceived it to be. So what I've done is I've gone and bought some really good, fantastic uh, medieval hardware for my belts. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And uh, now we're going to take a, a crack at making our own medieval belt. Let's take a look. First couple of points. Make sure you're cutting on a good surface. I'm using a nice cutting mat. I only got this off eBay. Um, a few weeks ago, not that expensive. I like to use a nice, clean, fresh blade every time I'm doing a cut. Correction. For every new project that I do, um, I think a sharp blade is always the way to go. Don't ever be afraid of making a second or third pass at something. Some of this leather is quite thick. This is um, three millimeter leather, which is approximately eight ounce in the US for uh, Canadian friends of mine. Just while I'm cutting this, we'll go over a couple of quick points about medieval style belts. Number one, uh, buckles as we know them go back some thousands of years. Uh, number two, belts were not normally as wide as predicted uh, in movies and television shows. So please don't use, you know, some TV show as a historical reference because uh, it's not. So this is based off, uh, I believe, a 10th century Scandinavian belt find. Uh, now the length of the belt would have varied depending upon who was wearing it and obviously what they could get at the time but you know nobles and those people who could afford it were wearing longer belts than those people who perhaps had less money uh, belts were always tied up in a in a knot fashion, we'll go through that a little later. But your belt was incredibly important. It had everything, you know, that you needed for that day on that belt. Typically, money, uh, you know, your few items in your pouch wouldn't have been very much. Uh, let's see, what else? Weapons and tools for the day food for the day, so, you know, interesting stuff, so let's, uh, let's get going. So we now have our piece of leather. The, the next thing that I want to do is just tidy up some of these edges. And you can see cutting is not perfect and sometimes that's just a little bit unavoidable. That's okay. Um, we can deal with that as we go along. First thing we're going to do is just going to bevel down the edges. I just want to make these just a bit tidier. It's not always possible to get. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I'm doing a process called beveling. These tools only cost a couple of dollars. You can buy them from most of those kind of big online retail stores. And they're really useful. What this does, this process achieves, is it just rounds off the edges and makes it that much nicer. 
I think for me, this is one of those kind of really big uh, points of detail that you'll see as a difference between um, someone who is um, putting a bit of heart and soul into their work and someone who is not. Alrighty, so I'm going to do this on both the front and the rear of the belt. We now have this really nice smooth edge on both sides, front and rear. The next process is going to be to use a stitch screwdriver and that's going to give us a nice, uh, I guess just sort of texture on what we're doing. All right, so this is a fairly narrow belt but it is historically accurate. Now what I want to do is I'm going to pass the uh, stitch screwdriver down the belt once more. And this is going to uh, mean that I can use my uh, Celtic weave, which I'm really looking forward to. It's one of my leather tools that I really don't get out anything like enough. So a stitch screwdriver is, is typically used just so you can embed the stitching below the surface of the leather. However, um, in this case, what we're doing is we're simply using it as a yarn. Um, I guess just a tool to, for decor decoration. Uh, now what I want to start doing So I'm going to wet the leather down. Now you want the leather wet enough that it's workable but not too wet. It's a little bit difficult to achieve today because it's actually quite a warm day. Uh, supposedly we're in well into autumn now in, in Brisbane but uh, it's a very kind of humid unusually uh, hot kind of period. Start working this wheel we do know that um, the medieval people loved to decorate anything, anything they could. You want to be applying a pretty decent amount of pressure with these sorts of wheels. They don't cost that much. You can get them uh, online from some of the major kind of uh, online retail stores like eBay and Amazon and so on. There's plenty more to choose from, uh, but they certainly add something really quite different and interesting to your work. And I certainly enjoy using these. As you can see, the leather's starting to dry up a little bit. Alrighty, the next process we're going to do is called burnishing. Burnishing uh, is just really a detailing process for the uh, edge of the um, belt, in this case. Right here. So what we do is we rub beeswax relatively firmly down the side of the belt. Now you can get machines for this. I don't do enough leather work to really justify a machine, not at this stage anyway. Um, we're in the process of making a absolute truckload of costumes for a Germanic production of a uh, historical event from the uh, mid 11th century and so we will as an organization be producing a whole lot more of this but not just at the moment. Okay we now use a tool like this and you simply start to burnish away uh, and what you are doing is you're just essentially smoothing the, the sides of the belt down. Now a tool like this doesn't cost much money. Uh, again, uh, you can get it off uh, eBay or what have you. 
um, Amazon and many of those other types of stores. And what this is doing is just really smoothing down and giving some really extra nice detail to the side of the belt. I know people might think, side of the belt, what do I want to do that for? It seems like a lot of hard work for something that most people aren't going to notice, but it's those kind of differentiating features and details which people do notice. And uh, the work that you can put in at this stage really does bring out what you've done. Uh, and I think it's just quality and passion and these sorts of things that people really do enjoy seeing. Alrighty, so this can take a few minutes. Uh, so the burnishing is now complete. The next thing that I'm going to do, uh, just dampening this leather down just a bit. Now I find when you dye leather, uh, to dampen the leather first is a really good option to do. I'm using um, this leather dye from a company called Mac Lace Leather, which is where I get most of my leather gear from. Uh, as with, with most of this kind of stuff, if you're not using it every day, it's always worth just giving it a bit of a shake just to mix it up a bit more. And I just like to use a sponge just to applicate that down. And what I'm finding with the, um, when you moisten the leather is that you get a more even finish, if that makes sense. And I'm sure it's terrible grammar. Um, so some of my friends are gonna give me a heap of stick over that, but <laughs> you, you get a better surface coverage with uh, a, All right, now because this is a medieval belt, we're going to do both sides of the leather. So that's just to do with the way that leather belts were worn in the period. I'll just refresh on some of the stuff that we've already talked about, I realise. Um, so, a leather belt... Uh, the length of it would vary according to status. And I guess um, the period as well, very much so. But also, uh, you kind of look at the, uh, the availability of uh, skins and that kind of thing. A leather belt was probably one of the more important things that someone could own, I guess. That's what your purse hung from, you know, your tool bag, your weapons. Uh, all your kind of stuff to see you through that day uh, all hung off the belt. So, because pockets hadn't been invented at that stage, alrighty. Now you may wish to use multiple uh, layers of dye. It's up to you. So the next thing that I use personally is a, a thing called an antique finish. Um, for those in Australia, this comes out a bit like Vegemite. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really sort of sticky, sort of thick mixture. Um, but this really makes those details pop out. Um, and it's a really amazing thing to use. It doesn't take long to really dry as such. Uh, lastly, I'm going to use a leather sealer. The one I use again is from Maclace Leather. Um, the guys who work there are really great. Um, but I find them very helpful. Um, definitely worth talking to if you're, you're new into the uh, the hobby and this is going to just help protect all your work from UV light 
and rain and stuff like that. Once again, does not take long to dry. So here's the buckles that I've purchased. These are wolf buckles. Uh, I really like them. They're absolutely consistent with grave finds from around the uh, from memory, 11th century. I'll see if I can get a link in the description below. Right, let's talk about pinning a rivet. Right, we now have the buckle with the corresponding holes in the belt matched into the, the buckle. Now, I know I use one of these things you can get from haberdashery stores, hardware stores and the like. And you'll find this has a concave shape in it and this is designed for using with rivets. And then you just apply force with a hammer and that will eventually... Alrighty guys, all done, all finished. Come out with a really, really good looking belt, really solid. Really happy with this. This is a good piece of work. Um, really, really happy with it. Doesn't cost that much. Honestly, you can buy uh, belt blanks from some of the medieval reenactment stores for anything from around about 20 or so dollars uh, and the, the hardware itself from maybe as little as five dollars and takes about an hour of your time. So I'm really happy with this. This has come out super well, super excited, really happy. It's a great little project to do at the moment especially and uh, I think it adds so much character and individualism to your medieval sort of uh, impersonation, your medieval character. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.